If I had no gold and silver, what would I buy today? It's a topic that I've done before and it was in a very different climate. Premiums were a lot higher, gold price was a lot lower, and in fact silver was a lot more expensive. So what's changed and what's changed in my outlook on whether or not buying gold right now or silver right now is better? Let's dive in and have a good old precious metal ramble. everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for another Precious Metal Ramble where we talk about all things gold and silver. 14 months ago I made a video which I titled, If I had no gold and silver, this is what I would buy today. It's a very kind of youtube -y title and it ended up doing very well with it being now my most viewed video ever with three quarters of a million views on it. Never expected it to do that, but it's still, I think, a really great video to have a listen to if you've not already seen it. And especially if you want to compare and contrast it with what I'm going to be talking about today. The landscape of that market that I based that video on has changed dramatically. So I want to revisit it. I want to talk today about what I would buy right now with the change in premiums that we're seeing on silver and on gold. And also the fact that gold's prices are still quite high, whereas silvers are still down there, a little bit lower, in fact, from where they were. And with that premium drop, you can really start to accumulate some of this stuff at very good prices. Now, do remember that I am not a financial advisor or an investment guru. I'm just a guy who likes to buy shiny things. I am not a doomsday prepper. I don't think the world is going to end imminently. And I stack to preserve wealth and buying power over a long period of time. If you are like-minded, I'd love to know your theories and your thoughts down in the comment section. That's one of the reasons why we make this kind of video. It would be great to hear from you. And if, of course, you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe and hit that little thumbs up button. So the landscape has changed drastically. Let's have a look at what has changed. Premiums, that's the big one. So premiums have come down a lot. You can accumulate silver, certainly, at a lot less than you had to in November 2020, uh, no, sorry, November 2022, which is when I made that first video. And in that first video, the sovereign was king for me. It was the thing that I picked, the thing that I said, if I had nothing, I would be looking to buy right now today. I think that has changed, but it's somewhat situational. I still love sovereigns and I still would buy sovereigns all day long. But there are other opportunities which do kind of tickle my fancy somewhat, and silver is certainly one of those. Now, it's somewhat dependent still on the price of what kind of silver you're buying. But back in November 2022, premiums were ginormous. If you were buying governmented bullion, you would be paying a very high premium on them. Now, those premiums have come down, which has meant that people who did buy at that time as I was reflecting in that first video, are going to be stuck holding that silver for a much longer period of time. Now with gold, gold's price has gone up since then. And even if back then you were buying at a slightly higher premium than you could today, because right now you can buy really quite cheap gold, you're making money. Silver, you're gonna probably be underwater. Spot price has gone down and premiums have come down, which means the secondary market has come down and it's difficult to make money on your gold and silver right now. But holding it and keeping it for the long term, it's still a good opportunity in my opinion. But part of a bigger portfolio, don't get put all your eggs in one basket. That's, God, please don't do that. So many people I see talk about doing that and it's just a really, really bad idea. So to the question in point, if I had no gold and silver, what would I buy today right now? If I could get it for spot price, I would buy silver. I would buy governmented silver, I'd buy Britannia's, I'd, if I was in the UK, I'd buy other raw mint products if I could get them for cheap, and I would be, I wouldn't care if they were milky. I mean, there's a big milk spotting problem with the raw mint, and we'll talk about that, I think, at another time. I'm waiting for a formal reply, in fact, from the press office from the raw mint about some of their stuff that's going on. We'll see what happens with that. But if I was stacking silver right now, and somebody gave me the opportunity to buy 500 Britannias, and I had none other, no other precious metals right now, if I could get them for a really cheap price. And what I mean by a cheap price is 20, 21, 21 pounds an ounce. I've seen that go on the silver forum, maybe not 500 of them in one go, but I've seen people selling tubes of Britannias for 22, 21 pounds an ounce. Um, they don't come very often, I'll say, uh, so it is difficult, you have to work for those deals and find those deals, but that is, in my opinion, a great price, and I would buy those over sovereigns all day long. 
That's with the proviso that I'm going to be holding them for a long period of time. I am not a fan of short-term holds on silver. I think you're gonna burn yourself quite hard. You're gonna find that the money that you'll get out at the other end is drastically lower than what you're buying. And you know, if given the opportunity to buy silver from say a dealer or from Robin directly, don't do that, it's really expensive. Um, but if you're buying directly from a dealer, yeah, you're gonna be paying at least 25, 30% or more premium, probably more in fact for new stuff. That's a lot and you'll be surprised. I did a video two weeks ago just showing what dealer buyback prices were. Britannia's get more. There's just simple maths. People want them. The capital gain status on them is very, very attractive. If I was presented with the opportunity to buy some gold on the cheap right now, would I? I think whilst I said last time sovereigns are the best and gold was the best, and I still think gold might still be the safer bet in the long term, I would probably still look to get the silver if I can accumulate it cheap. If I can't accumulate that cheap and I need to lock some money up, then gold would certainly be the way to go. The type of gold would be still for me sovereigns. They're the king of all investment coins here in the United Kingdom. They have the capital gains exempt status. They're a really, really attractive size, being just under a quarter of an ounce each. I think, yeah, ounce each. I think they're like 0.2354 uh, of an ounce. They are absolutely beautiful parts of history and you can get them really cheap. You can get them 1%, 2% over spot. From dealers, you're probably looking, if they're just the best value, really minty quality, not particularly you know, great. Coins like these where you know they're just jingled and jangled and before anybody starts moaning that I'm ruining the coins, let's remember right, that sovereigns were in circulation coins and they're designed to be in circulation and used. They don't matter, they are just the weight of gold. So yes, I, I will always get some smart backside in the comments that will tell me I'm ruining my sovereigns. They are designed to be touched and enjoyed. That's what my thoughts are. But they are better than having a one ounce gold. Right now, the market for one ounce gold coins is hard. You have to find a buyer who's willing to part with over 1,600 pounds for one piece of gold. That's not an easy thing to do. Whereas sovereigns sitting around the 385, 400 mark, depending on the sovereign, that's a much easier prospect. And of course, it gives you more liquidity as well. If you need to you know, split up your investment and you just need 400 quid, you can sell a sovereign, or 385, you can sell a sovereign. Um, whereas with this, you have to sell it, get change, what do you do with the change? That's my point here. It's, they're just better all around. The sovereigns are just better. Would I buy collectibles? So that's the other thing. Um, you know, you've got proof coins, that's a different market altogether. And I would say that if you're buying or investing in proof coins, that's a really high risk strategy. It's something that I do and that I am comfortable with holding for a very long time with the knowledge that some, if not most, will not be particularly productive in terms of investments, but it's those small few within there that make that money. If I had nothing today, I would steer clear of those. Now, premium bullion like old Queen's Beasts, like this 10 ounce here, where you could probably quite happily ask for three, seven, five, 400 pounds. I've seen some of them go for around that mark. They're beautiful, beautiful coins. The heyday, the absolute glory days of the Royal Mint. Um, I would probably stick clear of those still now. Would I go for cheap and low to the ground bars of silver? I wouldn't be adverse to it if I'm honest. And if I'm being honest, you probably are more likely to get silver at around sort of 20 pounds, 19 pounds, even potentially down to 18 pounds an ounce mark on silver bars than you are from coins. Now, the problem comes at the other end when you try and sell it, you're gonna not have any kind of formative value added on top of the weight of the silver. But coins, potentially. You know, we've seen the market where there was a big premium hike on the coins, that has now come down. Will it potentially return? Maybe, it could do. And that's the other benefit. If you can buy Britannia's low to the ground right now and wait, and then the market is in the right place for the premium growth, then you will be not only earning on the silver, hopefully if silver goes up, you'll also be earning on the premium that's happened for that. Now, the only other metal that I've got out here on the table that I haven't talked about is platinum. Would I be looking to accumulate any platinum right now? Platinum has been a long time kind of, I guess, wishful fantasy of mine. It seems like it should do better than it is, but it's still stuck and not really performing particularly well. It's losing value compared with gold. It's less than half the value of gold. At least before when I was buying it, it was a little bit higher than where it is now. Will it come good one day? I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me, clearing my throat. 
But um, I don't think it's likely. I'm not going to accumulate any platinum. If I had no precious metals today, I would give it a long, hard skip. It's got more problems in terms of uh, potential swing than silver does for sure. So in summary, would I accumulate gold and silver here and now today? I think that's the, so we've talked about the types that I would accumulate. Would I accumulate in the first place is the other matter. Now, if you're brand new to gold and silver and you have nothing, you very, mel very much well, maybe, that was hard to get out, but I got it, I got there, I got there. You might very well be looking at this video thinking, well, should I buy at all? Silver is more attractive, I think, right now because of the price points. We have lower price points on the silver than we do, relatively speaking, for gold being relatively high. If you're buying for that long, long term, though, when we're talking 10, 20, 30, 40 years lifetimes, then in my opinion, it doesn't really matter for either but I think the safer bet is probably gold. And there's a few reasons for that. If you're gonna look at comparative wealth of items, having a one ounce silver coin that you can buy for, let's call it 21, 22, 23 pounds an ounce right now, you know, it's quite a lot to lock 20 quid up in, just something like that. Yeah, storage is an issue for silver when you get into the big boy areas, but gold is a lot more efficient. You've got one, one little coin here. This is much easier to hide, much easier to store, much more liquid. I would still be looking at gold. So it kind of somewhat depends on your circumstances and where you want to be for that long term. If you want to make money on gold and silver, you've got to think about it long term. You can't think of it as a um, tradable day trading asset or even week trading asset. You can't look to buy gold and silver and then easily make money on it. You can, and that's where dealers make their money. They are ultimately doing what you're doing, but they sell it straight away and make a little bit of money on it. But they also lose money when they have price changes, when they have spot market movements. So it's very, very worth thinking about what the goals are for your stacking journey if you're starting out today. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not a subscriber to the idea of the doomsday happening and silver and gold being that new currency. I do envisage one day selling all of my gold and silver. I can't take it with me when I kick the proverbial bucket. So you've got to think about how you're going to sell it at the other end. And unless you've got a giant YouTube channel with a thousand people on a newsletter that will buy gold and silver off you in million dollars amounts per year, like I had last year, then you've got to think long and hard about where things will be and what you want to do with that gold and how you're going to get rid of it, or the silver, in fact. Um, it's each to their own, I think, about what the plan would be. And you've got to have a hard think about that. And it should really inform what you're buying now. So, yeah. That's kind of what I think. And I don't expect this video to get the three quarters of a million views that the first one got, unless YouTube decides that it absolutely loves my content. And if you liked my content and you want to tell YouTube that you liked it, then don't forget to hit that little thumbs up. And if you've watched to the 13th minute of my video, there's a good chance that you're either crazy or you've enjoyed it. So either way, you should just hit the thumbs up button, quite frankly. And if you're not subscribed, you should probably hit that subscribe button as well. Um, it's, I think, an interesting topic, and I would like to see if any of your opinions have changed since, say, 2022 or 2021, or even pre-COVID. Have you changed your mind about what you want to accumulate? If you had nothing, what would you do now? Or are you still accumulating? Are you looking to buy more? I know from my perspective that I've slowed down drastically in how much I am accumulating, and that's partly because, you may have spotted it earlier in the, uh, the video, that I have been accumulating at times when you could get things a lot cheaper thousand pounds an ounce for the majority of the gold that I've got in my stack. And that's a really great return already. Can't say so much for the silver. A lot of the silver that I've been buying throughout my buying career, it was certainly pre, you know, pre Brexit, you were looking at these being about 150 each. Yeah, you can sell them for 240 on the secondary market, but it's hard, it's difficult. It's certainly not as good a return if my, in, on my opinion as gold and certainly post Brexit we have to pay a lot more for the silver in the first place it's hard anyway I start to tangentially ramble that's what I do and that's what I do best and my backyard bully and ramblers will know it so thank you to you guys for watching and to the cool kids club members who are just awesome and support the channel thank you we'll see you on the next one that's it from me thank you all for watching as always please make sure that you like share comment and subscribe for more